Hi everyone, my name is Carl, and I once had a horrible, strange story happen to me, after which I realized how valuable my life is, for it was divided into a before and an after, and that after made me reconsider my whole outlook. I grew up as a very depressed teenager. There wasn't much that made me happy. Why did I become like that? I think I was born this way. Sometimes I think the doctors when they saw me in childbirth cried because they had never seen sadder eyes. Man, I was three years old when I said my first word, and you know what that word was? Tired. I'm fucking tired. I'm only three years old and I'm already tired of the world. It's not fair. We're taught freedom of choice every day, and the fact is, you don't get to choose when you come into the world. Why the hell not? Why? Why? So, in my family, I had an older brother and a younger sister, and my parents. At home, instead of my name, my brother and sister called me Seth, which translates from English as sad, longing, sad. Well, there's that name too. My mother was terribly annoyed, but in time, I even got used to it. My brother Colin and little sister Joelle, unlike me, liked to fool around. I didn't mind as long as it didn't involve me. Colin usually loved to tickle Joelle to the point of hysterical laughter, and I either ran off to eat so they wouldn't touch me or locked myself in the bathroom. But that day, everything went wrong. I woke up early in the morning for school so I wouldn't be late. I had some homework to finish. Not only had I been up all night because of my dull condition, but I also had to get up early. I wasn't in any more of a mood than usual. My mum made me breakfast, an omelette, and I ate it all quickly. And as I was finishing the last piece, Colin came up behind me and slapped me on the back. That piece of omelette was in my throat, and I started coughing and gagging, and snot coming out of my nose and tears coming out of my eyes. Mum got scared, and then Joelle came running up and she smacked me in the stomach with her little fist. The omelette flew right out and landed on the table, right on Colin's plate. I coughed and wiped my mouth, and then I was like, have a good one, Colin, and I grabbed my backpack and wanted to go out. And my brother was like, have a good day, Seth, though you never have one, right? I gave him the middle finger and went outside. The omelette was still in my throat, and I decided to get coffee. Somehow, the hell they put sugar in it, and I can't stand it in my coffee. Not only that, when I sipped my coffee, it was too bitter, and I burnt my lip and spilt it on my white shirt. And then the school bus pulled up. Yeah, beautiful morning. I said to myself as I stepped inside. The guy sitting inside didn't miss a moment to bitch at me. Hey, Carl, is something wrong? You don't seem to be in the mood, but wait, you're always in a mood. How can I pour more coffee on your shirt to make life seem more disgusting? Listen, the guys and I were thinking, what would happen if you went to an amusement park? Would it make you cry? Does anything make you feel good? I'm looking forward to dancing at your funeral, Doyle. How rude! Get away from him! I turned around and noticed a girl sitting next to me. She was all black, you know, all detached, with piercings and tattoos on her neck. I nodded my head slightly, and she smiled back slightly. She was our new girl, Margaret, came from Florida. I dreamed of living there because it almost always rained there. Somehow we became friends and talked all day long. I'd never had anything like that before. After all, as you may have realized, I never had any friends. Margaret was different from the others. She valued and respected a person's personal space. She didn't pester me with unnecessary questions, and I liked that about her. She offered me her skullcap to cover the coffee stains, and it looked pretty good on me. We were immediately engaged in class, but we weren't touched by it. After three classes, I knew I wanted to connect with her forever. After class, Margaret suggested I go for a walk in the woods. She adored them as much as I did. She showed me such a cool place where there wasn't a single living soul. Just trees, damp and moss everywhere. It was like there was no sunlight getting into this little forest that I didn't know about, and it looked amazing. I'm sure every self-respecting, depressed teenager should know about places like this. We snuck into the very center, and Margaret talked about herself, and I talked about myself. She wasn't born under her own star either, and as she said, that's why we were so similar. I can cheer you up. How? I have special stuff. Oh, no, no, I'm not into forbidden products. No, no, it's a natural product. No harm done. You'll love it. We'll have a little fun, and then it will go away. And what's this? She handed me some mushrooms in the palm of her hand, like little, little mushrooms. 
She said you had to eat them and wait and then it would be fun. I hadn't tried anything like that before, but I agreed. I ate a couple of the things and she was with me. Oddly enough, I didn't feel anything. We never laughed, we just sat there in silence. After a couple of hours, I asked when it would work and Margaret said it probably wouldn't. We packed up and went home. I got back later than usual and my mother asked where I'd been and why I hadn't picked up my phone. I just said I hadn't heard the call and showed her my phone to prove it. Then I went into the room. My mum stormed in right away and started yelling like I was using, but I didn't know what she was talking about. I said nothing, that I wanted to go to sleep and get them off my back. Then Colin came into the room and laughed at me for a long time and then was like, disgusting Ty, and it made me so mad. I started yelling that to him, I was disgusting myself, that I was his Seth and I couldn't take anything from that. I punched Colin and he punched back and I felt a sharp pain on my body. When I took my shirt off, I saw mushrooms had grown there, just like the ones I had ate. What the hell is that? What are those? Mushrooms? What, for real? Where did they come from? I, I don't know. Get them off me. No, no, no. I started rushing around the room, trying to get them off, but I couldn't. It was freaking me out. I called Margaret, but she said that she had the exact same things growing on her, and she was scared too. Colin, get it away from me. Oh no, no. My brother was terrified and my mum ran off somewhere. And I was looking at these mushrooms and I was nauseous. Colin tried to call an ambulance, but I snatched the phone away from him and started calling myself. But nothing worked because I was distracted from the buttons by the mushrooms on my fingers. I looked in the mirror and saw mushrooms on my face and hair. I started panicking, screaming, trying to wash my face, but I was in pain. Then Margaret came up to me abruptly and slapped me on the cheek. What are you doing here? Bringing you to your senses. Where are your mushrooms? What mushrooms? Are you retarded? You told me you had mushrooms on your body. I don't have any mushrooms. Calm down. I'm calling an ambulance. No, let me do it. What are you doing, Carl? You're calling from the frying pan. What? What are you talking about? Carl, have some water. I'm not thirsty. Leave me alone. Ah! And then I got slapped again. I opened my eyes and saw that I was sitting in the same forest. Next to me was a terrified Margaret. I looked over my body and there were no more mushrooms. What happened? You were kind of weird. What happened? You were yelling about mushrooms growing on you. You were yelling at Colin, at mum, and then you punched me a few times. What do you mean? I wasn't home? Come on, we've only been here 15 minutes. What are you doing? Don't scare me. I'm, I'm not going to eat that crap anymore. What crap? The mushrooms. Then I looked at Margaret and there was a huge mushroom with eyes and a mouth and it was talking to me. Ah, what the hell? Where am I? What's wrong with me? I screamed. I closed my eyes and got sick again. And then I coughed and coughed and coughed. Then I threw up already. When I opened my eyes, I saw Colin and mum and Joel in front of me. I was lying on the floor. It was morning outside the window. I got up abruptly and asked what had happened. I was told that I had eaten an omelette with mushrooms that mum had made me for breakfast. What? Where did the mushrooms come from? I brought them from a friend. Apparently you should not eat them. Yeah, you shouldn't. Where's Margaret? Who's Margaret? The bus is here. Come on, get up. I didn't know what was going on, but apparently my mum's mushrooms had some kind of effect. I got on the bus. I didn't get coffee. There was no Margaret. It was all so strange. Only a couple of hours later, my skin started to itch a lot. And there was a skull necktie in my bag for some reason. Hi, I'm Tiffany, and I'm very afraid of insects. I agree that this is not an unusual phobia, and many people have it, but my case is not quite that simple. The fact is that these insects were under my skin. Yes, they were right under my skin. How did they get there? Now I'll tell you everything. But in the meantime, subscribe to our channel and share my story with your friends. So, my older sister India and I live together because we lost our parents in a car accident many years ago. I don't remember everything very well because I was just a baby, but my sister remembers with horror the day when they went on business and suddenly in the middle of the night, the police called and said that there was an accident. Indy couldn't believe it for a long time, full of confidence that this was a mistake. She immediately called our mother on the phone, but she didn't answer. I was only three years old at the time. In a state of shock, 
she ran to the police station, taking me in her arms. And the sight that I saw is the only vivid memory from my childhood. I saw my mother. She was lying on the ground, and a stranger had covered her with a white sheet. He covered her face, and I thought how she would breathe. She must be uncomfortable. Indy sat down on the ground, hugged me, and began to cry loudly. I suddenly wanted to go to my mother so much, but they wouldn't let me. From that day on, my sister and I lived together. I still remember how she took me and herself to a psychologist. I still don't understand why. That aunt in the white coat warned us that we might have consequences due to psychological damage. Man, I didn't even know what the word damage meant. I often asked where our parents were, and each time, Indy reacted the same way, crying. At first, our relatives helped us. They often came to our home, brought food, gave money, played with me, and when time passed, Indy left school and went to work. Then she looked for a nanny for me and found an old woman who was half deaf and blind, but, as my sister said, not so expensive. It was only then that I realized that my mom and dad would never come back. Sometimes I cried at night, sometimes we cried together, but I saw less of Indy because she was so busy. That's how we grew up, dramatically matured due to circumstances. Our neighbors have been visiting us for many years, and some of them still do. They also bring us food, help with repairs around the house, with some serious papers. My mother was sociable. As my sister says, she was friends with everyone around her and was always friendly, which is why everyone loved our family. I grew up and Indy sent me to school. There I was also treated with sympathy and understanding. It was annoying to some extent, but on the other hand, it was nice. When I started my transition age, I suddenly began to often remember the picture of the accident, and one detail did not leave my head. Insects. For some reason, there were a lot of spiders or bugs under my feet. I wanted to crush them all, but I couldn't move because of my sister's embrace. And one night, I had a dream that I was in a room filled with insects. They surrounded me and attacked. Then I woke up from fear and how I would scream. Indy came running to calm me down, but soon the nightmare continued. I remember sitting in a chemistry class, writing a lecture in my notebook, and I felt like something was moving inside my hand. I got scared, started scratching it, hitting it with my other hand, and screamed in horror, jumped up from the chair, and it stopped. I looked up and realized that the entire class was looking at me. It turns out that I also hooked my hand on a cone of sulfuric acid, which spilled and ate everything that was on the table. Indy was called to school. At home, when we talked, I said that I feel like I have insects running under my skin. She certainly didn't believe me and sternly told me not to behave like this anymore. The vile creatures came back to me that night. I saw something crawling under the blanket, and as soon as I put it away, I saw something crawling up my legs, and it was also moving under my skin. I jumped out of my seat again, waving my arms and yelling like a madwoman. Indy immediately came running and said, You don't have anything there. You just think you do. This offended me, because it meant that she thought I was crazy, and I wasn't. These spiders or beetles began to live all over my body, and each time brought me to hysteria. It has already become so common to frighten me to death in a store, in class, at home, or on a walk with friends. And constantly, complaints were brought to my sister. I already lied to her, tried to hide it, but she didn't believe me. In the end, she took me back to the psychiatrist. I resisted, shouting that I'm not crazy, that I really have something inside and it needs to be removed. During the therapy session, I refused to talk until the spider started moving again in my stomach area. I lifted my t-shirt and showed it to Indy and the doctor. I said, look, see, I'm not lying. Here they are. And I showed them my hand. Well, how can they not notice it? Because they are so huge. At this point, the doctor calmed me down, gave me water and sedatives. After 10 minutes, when the medicine took effect and the insects calmed down, I turned on a big TV video. I saw myself on the screen. 
It turns out that our entire session was recorded on camera. The picture clearly showed me jumping up from my chair, lifting my t-shirt and showing the insects, which weren't there. I asked to review the video again and again, but it was clearly visible that there were no insects or movements on my skin. All I felt was fear, despair, and sadness. I just started crying because I thought it meant I was a psychopath. Indy, don't send me to the psych ward, I shouted to my sister, and she also started crying, but said that she would not give me to anyone for anything. All we had to do was visit a psychologist, and I continued my treatment. As it turned out, these were the consequences after the loss of my parents. It was about them that we were warned once. The only thing I'm most happy about is that we managed to hide the moment of my treatment in front of my neighbors and my friends. I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy. In general, this was my case. I went to the doctor for about a year because the emotional wound was bigger than we thought. But fortunately, everything went away and I feel much better. And so does my sister. By the way, we got a kitten at home to distract us, relieve stress and relax. It really worked. Our cat immediately chose a place to sleep on my bed, so it was even better. My sleep became better, knowing that I was protected by a furry pet. I advise that to everyone.